Okay, about two o'clock this morning, uh, police received a complaint that two men armed with knives forced entry into a residence at uh, Beattie Road at Archfield. At the time, there were five persons in the residence, including one 21-year-old female and her three-year-old son. The persons who forced entry um, assaulted one of the male occupants quite severely. He ended up with some severe facial injuries. He was taken to the hospital as a result of those injuries. They also assaulted, to a minor extent, one of the other male occupants as well. The two men forced the 21-year-old woman and her three-year-old son from the residence into a vehicle, which they actually stole the keys from the residence and then stole that um, vehicle from the residence. They subsequently left the residence and police were notified uh, in relation to that. Well, there was quite an extensive amount of inquiries that were conducted and during the course of those investigations it was revealed that threats had in fact been made towards the woman and the child and those threats included threats to kill. As a result of that, a abduction alert was issued this morning around about 8.30 and we received some very good public assistance almost immediately which resulted in the location of the stolen BMW which had been taken from that residence. It had been abandoned in Ipswich Road at Rock Lee. Um, we conducted further investigations which led to a possible second vehicle being involved which was another BMW. Um, as a result of those inquiries, uh, with support also from detectives from the um, State Crime Operations Command, that vehicle was sighted down in the Logan area. Um, I understand a pursuit subsequently ensued when that vehicle uh, declined to stop. Of significance at that time was that the vehicle contained a male and the child. Unfortunately, the female wasn't in the vehicle at the time, which raised our concerns about the matter. Um, the pursuit continued until that vehicle finally entered a dead-end street in Evans Road at Kingston and the male occupant fled the vehicle leaving the child behind. He was apprehended and the child was safely taken back into custody. The child sustained a minor injury to his head and he was taken to the Logan Hospital for treatment. Further investigations led to the um, identification of where the female was and she's also been located safe and well. Uh, is she injured? No, the female's not injured at all. Was the injuries to the child uh, incidental injury in terms of the car hitting other parked cars as we understand or was, was it actually assaulted by the man? No, it appears that the injuries were consistent with hitting the dashboard when the vehicle came to a final and abrupt, stop, abrupt halt. So did that second uh, BMW hit a, a police car at one point? Yes, apparently there was a police vehicle that was stationary at the roundabout on Kingston Road and uh, Bega Road at Kingston and the um, vehicle being pursued has in fact hit the front of that police vehicle and then continued on. Uh, we've also involved the services of the Department of Child Safety in relation to follow-up work that needs to be done concerning the welfare of the child in, uh, as a result of events that occurred today. Could you repeat for us please the relationship um, between the 25-year-old and the woman and child? Yeah, the 25-year-old is to my knowledge the biological father of the, uh, the child that was taken. You said that there may have been some domestic violence issues there. Is that a, a great concern with this case? Well, the situation as was described to us of what occurred at the residence of Beattie Road certainly um, are domestic violence related issues, um, those of itself. So we obviously have to look at that as part of our investigation as well. Who were the other men inside the house? Uh, there are three occupants that actually reside at the house. The, the female doesn't actually reside at that address. Do you know what she was doing there? Um, exactly what she was doing there probably isn't relevant to this investigation. And exactly where was she found? Uh, we found her at her mother's house. Was this man, the 25 year old, previously known to police? Um, that's probably information that we wouldn't reveal at this particular point in time. I think it would be uh, a little bit prejudicial at this stage to throw that out there. And so is, this, is it safe to say that this is some sort of custody battle over the child? Yeah. Hang on a sec. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, say that again. Is, is it safe to say that this was a custody battle for this three-year-old boy? No, I don't think it's safe to actually say that. Until we've actually conducted the investigations and got to the bottom of it, um, it's too early to preempt the reasons why the situation unfolded as it did. So the 21-year-old woman and 25-year-old man, are they still in a relationship or do you believe they're estranged? Uh, that's still a matter for our investigation to figure out. And you said in regards to the two men who entered um, the home, in Archerfield, they were armed with knives. Can you elaborate on what sort of knives they were? No, not at this point in time. Um, there's, 
Obviously, uh, differing versions of events as people give when they describe what weapons look like and who's got what. So until such time as we've got everybody fully committed to exactly what they saw, um, all I can tell you is that the information we've got is that there were two knives. Who was the other man? Do you know who that other person the knife was? We haven't identified him at this stage, no. Still looking for him. We are still looking for that man. No. Jeff, can you talk about the movements between 2 a.m. and 9 a.m.? The movements of whom? When the abduction took place. No, all we can really say is after the abduction took place, exactly who went where at what point is still um, unfolding. We can say that the vehicle was sighted at Mangrabad East initially with its first sighting. Um, it was then sighted again over at Eight Mile Plains until it was then sighted for the third time down at Logan where the um, pursuit commenced. Just in terms of the chronology of those locations, do you know roughly what time, perhaps the first sighting and the last? Or? The first sighting was around about 8.45, the second sighting I think was just before 10 and the third sighting was around about 10.30 I believe. Were they all from tips from the public? No, the first sighting was actually police who were conducting inquiries over at one of the addresses and the vehicle drove past and before they could get to their vehicle and um, try and intercept it, the vehicle just took off. These were all after that first BMW was found um, on Ipswich Road or Rockley. The, the sighting of the actual second BMW was probably within about five minutes of the initial recovery of the stolen BMW. Um, we had investigators making inquiries in the Mangrabad East area, looking at various addresses uh, to assist in our inquiries, and that vehicle actually drove into the street where we were conducting one of those inquiries. So do you know exactly where that second vehicle was taken from? Uh, I don't off the top of my head, no. Was it stolen? Yes. It was. How, how concerned were police considering that there were threats made and considering what happened on the Gold Coast last month? We were, had some very serious concerns in relation to this matter, which is why we initiated the, uh, the Amber Alert. Um, we take ser threats to kill um, anybody, in particular children, uh, very, very seriously. And when it was revealed that those threats did exist, was when we immediately commenced to proceed with the uh, Amber Alert. Jeff, has the 25-year-old man been charged? Not at this point. What charges could he be facing? That will depend on how the investigation unfolds. Obviously, we still need to talk to all parties involved so I get full facts, and we need to make determinations as to what evidence exists and in relation to it. We still need to also talk to the people who have received medical treatment at the hospital and find out what level of complaints they wish to make as well. So, so the woman was found at her mother's house? Yes. Where that? What area was that? She was just hanging She'd been dropped off there apparently by, by the, the uh, person we were looking for. By the first, the one you caught? Yes. And when you say there was a man who was seriously injured at that home at Archerfield, what relationship does he have to the 21 year old woman? Uh, no relationship, just an associate. Jeff, we were just saying, you know, we've seen in the last month the dangers that police face every day when they're out on the job. How do you feel today after what you've been able to achieve with this young child and, and, and the mother? I think today's been a good result in relation to, more so in relation to how the public have assisted uh, very, very quickly in getting back to us with information. Um, obviously the Amber Alert system has been a huge asset to being able to identify the location of the, uh, the people involved and to enable us to bring them safely into custody as quickly as we could. Has the mother, re um, has the mother been reunited with her son? Not as yet. I think we can wrap it up, guys. Any other okay. last questions? La last question. Oh, How are you feeling personally about what's been achieved by the force today? Oh, I'm very proud of what they achieved. They've done a marvellous job, actually. It's been an excellent um, joint operation involving the local detectives here, the Logan Police, as well as uh, members of State Crime Oper Operations Command, who established the Police Operations Centre for the Amber Alert to be conducted. And the response that, uh, that they undertook was exceptional. Can I ask, how come... When did you get the first, how did you find out about this? Like